Our state representative, Holly Roshine, is back with me this morning. Now, Holly was elected to the House in 2012. Her seat covers all of Monroe County and into parts of southeast Miami-Dade County. Holly's going to give us an update on the 2013 legislative season. Holly, thank you so much for being back on the show today. Thanks so much, Jenna. I'm so, so happy to be here this morning. Well, it's wonderful having you back. It's been a while. So how has your first session been, Holly? Well, Jenna, my first session couldn't have gone more fantastic. Okay. I am absolutely pleased with what I was able to bring home and how I was able to help our community. And, you know, having served as a legislative aide for 10 years previously, I thought I knew a lot about the process. But every day I walked into my office and walked into the Capitol, I still learned two or three things every day. Good. And I bet it was nice, too, to be on the other side this time. <laughs> it was. It was. Yeah. It was a little surreal, mm -hmm. pushing that button. Uh -huh. um, I took several hard votes, mm -hmm. but that's why people sent me up there, to do the hard work mm -hmm. and to uh, promote our community. All right. Well, you're doing a great job. Let's talk, Holly, about the state budget and its implications right here in Monroe County. Absolutely, Jenna. And as a freshman legislator, I was so honored and so pleased to be part of the legislature in a year when the state is not in a deficit. We didn't have to cut social services. We didn't have to cut education. We actually got to fund things fully. Mm -hmm. And passing the budget is the only thing that the legislature must do. Mm -hmm. The Constitution says that we must pass a balanced budget. And this year, we did. And I'm happy to announce that we have a rather sizable increase in kindergarten through 12th grade funding. Mm -hmm. And in that funding increase, of course, is teacher pay raises. I think teaching is one of the hardest jobs, the most rewarding jobs, and one of the most important jobs that somebody can hold. And we need to, we need to take care of our teachers. So I'm happy that they'll be getting a raise very soon. Additionally, I was able to bring home just over $800,000 for the Lower Keys Medical Center, our local hospital, of course. And it's the only sole full functioning hospital in the Keys. And they have a very, very high rate of charity care and Medicaid, and that's very, very expensive. And so I was able to get in the state budget, $825,000 that is recurring. That means that's not just a one-time allocation. This will go on in perpetuity as long as the funding is there in the state budget. Another important thing that the legislature accomplished this year is state worker pay raises. State workers, and we all know I'm a former state worker, and we, uh, they have not received a raise in six years. And they work hard, they keep our state functioning, they keep our state beautiful for our visitors, and this year they're going to get an across the board pay raise. I'm so excited. And of course, my number one priority is wastewater funding for the Keys. Mm -hmm. We all know it's a very expensive state mandate. It's a necessary state mandate, but bottom line is it is expensive to sewer the Keys. Mm -hmm. While I didn't get to bring home the next $50 million of the wastewater bonds, I was able to bring home a million dollars for Key Largo and a million dollars for Marathon. And I'm looking forward to this summer sitting down with the county, all the municipalities, Tallahassee, the governor's office, and having a wastewater summit probably in July about how we move forward. Mm -hmm. We need a comprehensive plan, who needs what funding, who has gotten what funding so far, and, and really how we move forward. But out of $58 million for water projects, as a freshman legislator, mm -hmm. I got to bring home two million of it for my small county. I couldn't be more pleased. Well, it's wonderful news for us down it here is, in Monroe is. County. Yes, I was very, very excited. Great. Now, Holly, let's get into election reform. Election reform. Well, everybody remembers back to 2012 what a debacle it was. We couldn't call the election for the president. My own election got held up in Miami-Dade County because of the long lines, because of the length of the ballot, just the disorganization and chaos that was Election Day. And so what the legislature did this year was pass some pretty comprehensive reform. We shortened the ballot. There's going to be less amendments on the future ballots. We also allowed supervisor of elections more flexibility in how they conduct early voting. They can take eight days up to 14 days. I think early voting is one of the most ingenious 
inventions. Mm -hmm. Who would want to wait in line on election day? I've mm -hmm. always early voted, so I encourage everybody to do that. So it really allows our local supervisors more flexibility in locations and days. It also provides them funding for more machines. We also um, increased um, the amount of financial reports that candidates have to submit to the, super, to the uh, elections division. And that will provide accountability for our voters. They'll be able to see more often where candidates are getting their funding and how they're spending it. And we also, um, there was an issue with CCEs. And those are those kind of shady committees that, that can take in unknown amounts of money from uh, any various special interest or source and can basically uh, the negative campaign tactics are where these CCEs really come into play. So we banished co um, committees of continuing existence. That's what a CCE is. And we also upped the, the contribution limit from 500 to 1,000. And that is to, uh, to, to make sure that um, candidates are more accountable. Awesome. Well, definitely some more good news for us Absolutely. here in Monroe County. Now, Holly, we're running out of time this morning, but another new thing that I think is such a good thing, because I'm guilty of doing it, I'm, I'm not going to lie, is texting while driving. There is now a ban on that here in Monroe County and the state of Florida. Absolutely. And there was overwhelming support for this law. And what Florida did is we passed a secondary offense, and that means that you actually have to be pulled over for something else. And if the officer thought you were texting or using your phone, he can also cite you for that. So it's not a primary offense, it's a secondary offense, but we do join 45 other states mm -hmm. in, in some kind of ban. And like I said, it's all about making our roads mm -hmm. safer mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and definitely keeping our teenagers safe. I mm -hmm. think it's a real issue for them. Great. And I, I was guilty too. <laughs> I was guilty too. Um, I know I'm not alone, yes. <laughs> so that's good. All right, Holly, are you down here in the Keys for a while or? I am, I okay. am. I'm so happy to be home, you know, 60 days mm -hmm. um, straight in Tallahassee. And I did get to come home on the weekends here and there, but it, it was tough. And I'm so happy to be back in my community, sharing the good news of what we did, mm -hmm. taking people's concerns because there's still a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. So I welcome people to contact my office, mm -hmm. share your opinions, and uh, I look forward to coming back and letting Absolutely. you uh, know what else we did. Yeah, you have to give us some more updates very soon. So Holly, Absolutely. thank you so much. I know you're busy. Thanks for being here this morning. Thank you for having me. I'm going to take a quick break right now, but I'll be right back after these messages. Stay with me. There's more to come.